Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to be making a video on how to make butternut squash soup with apples, ginger, onions, parsnip, carrot, and some warming spices. I've been talking a lot about foods that help with cold and flu, and all of these ingredients really help with all of those things, and they especially help with lung nourishment and large intestine nourishment and digestion. In one of my previous videos, I talked about these specific ingredients, and today I'm gonna to be making a soup using all of those ingredients that is warming, delicious, and something that everyone will enjoy. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kieli JL and I am a nutritional wellness chef and sensuality coach based in Austin, Texas. And my mission is to teach you all about holistic nutrition, energetic cooking, and sensual nourishment so you own your own wellness and know how to heal yourselves through food. So let's get started with the prep. I have all of my vegetables laid out and the first thing I'm gonna do is wash all of them. I encourage all of you to use organic produce as much as possible. It has way more vitamins, nutrients, and it's energetically better for you than the conventional produce that you see in stores, which has about 40 to 60% less nutritional value. Um, make sure, of course, you take off all the stickers and wash your produce really, really well. I like using a tawashi to clean my fruits and vegetables because it wakes up the vegetable that's been sitting in the stores. It gets off all of the sticky gunk and any dirt on there. It's so effective. I'll show you this carrot before and after. So this is before the tawashi. And this is after the tawashi. This is one of those recipes that I like to improv. I have all of my ingredients that I'm gonna be using in this recipe. Butternut squash is our base ingredient. One or two Honeycrisp apples. I'm gonna use a knob of ginger. I don't really know how much yet because it just, um, the weather in Austin is now getting cold. I like to use more ginger than I maybe would in the summertime because ginger is really good for getting rid of any phlegm and dampness in the body according to traditional Eastern medicine. It is really good for your sinuses and your digestion. So I'm probably gonna be using a big amount of this. I think with my onion, I'll probably use this whole onion as well. And I have three carrots here. I'll use all of these as well as this parsnip, but I like to sort of figure it out as I go. I'm also going to be using some homemade marrow stock that I made. And if you don't know how to make marrow stock, check it out in my previous video because I go over just the nutritional benefits of marrow stock and how to make it and how easy and delicious it is. I'm gonna start with my butternut squash. This is quite a big one. These come in all shapes and sizes. I mean, look, this one's from our garden and it is way smaller. So be choosy with the ones that you get because these are quite difficult to handle and you definitely need patience and time to work with these. So I'm just gonna simply cut this in half to then figure out how much I want to use. So I'm just gonna start to take my knife very carefully. This is a very hard butternut squash, so just work to be present and be careful in what you're doing. Success. I think I want to use just this piece so I'm gonna take my peeler and just peel this as best as I can. These do get quite slippery, so be careful when you do this. Just by looking at this, this is probably gonna yield about three cups. I definitely wanna make enough so I have some for this week as well as some to freeze so I can have later. This is why a pastry scraper is so handy, because you just literally scrape it up and put it in your trash bin. So easy. Yes. Look how beautiful this color is. It's gonna be such a beautiful soup.
So now that I've gotten these broken down into larger pieces, I'm gonna break them down to be smaller because I want these to cook evenly. Because what I'm gonna do is take my immersion blender and blend all of these pieces. So I want all of them to, all of them to be the same size and it'll make it easier to blend. This is the size that I really want. Butternut squash is one of my absolute favorite squashes. I mean, look how beautiful this color is. It is incredible because like I said, it's good for your digestion and nourishes your stomach and your spleen from an Eastern medicine perspective. From a Western perspective, it aids in eye health and reduces the risk of muscular degeneration in your eyes specifically. It also helps reduce the risk of prostate cancer. It lowers your blood pressure. It lowers your LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol. It promotes healthy joints. It promotes collagen formation in the body. Because of this beautiful orange color, it helps fight harmful free radicals in the body and in the environment. It encourages your body's pH level to become more balanced. It boosts your immune system and it builds healthy bones by boosting the calcium and magnesium in your body. So it is really, really healthy for you. And if you're on Instagram, look me up. I love seeing people from all of my different social media platforms and I'm constantly posting different information all about holistic health, motivational cooking, and sensual nourishment. This is half of the butternut squash and it yielded quite a bit. So this looks like it's about four cups, which I think is gonna be the perfect amount for the soup. And I can save this for another time. I'm gonna mise en place the rest of my vegetables to get them going. For the soup, I'm gonna do all of these carrots, this parsnip, and one apple, just to add that bit of sweetness because everything is really sweet. So I just wanna add one apple. Honeycrisp are my favorite apples right now because it's the fall. It's the season for apples and they are so sweet and delicious. I'm leaving the skin on here because like I said, we're gonna blend this. So skin has a lot of nutritional benefits as well. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna put, layer all of the ingredients in here, everything except the onions and the ginger because all of that is gonna go into the Dutch oven to cook at the same time. I'm just going to rough chop all of these carrots. And if you notice, I am making all of these pretty much the same size. If you've never worked with a parsnip before, I encourage you to get one. They look just like carrots, but they're white, so I call them albino carrots. But they have a spicier flavor than carrots, and they are still sweet, and when you cook them, they have this beautiful, spicy, sweet flavor, and they are really delicious. I've never made this soup with parsnips before, but I know just because I love this flavor, and I know and love the flavor of everything else, it's gonna be a perfect match. Parsnips are really good for your digestion. They nourish your stomach and your spleen, and this white color is actually really good for your lungs and your large intestine, and they're just so, so good for you. So again, I'm making all of them roughly the same size so they cook pretty evenly. Okay, so this is my whole bowl of butternut squash, parsnips, carrots, and apples. I like to do the aromatics last, especially if I'm just prepping everything so it can be much easier to cook so I'm not fluttering back and forth from the cutting board to, this, to the stove, to the cutting board to the stove. Okay. I'm gonna be using this much ginger for all of this because I do wanna taste the ginger flavor. I really love it. If you are sensitive to ginger, you can use a little bit less, but I really love this. I'm gonna add all of this onion because onions are extremely good for your lungs. And I think that's especially good to protect your lungs during COVID-19. And they also help get rid of parasites in the body and phlegm and any dampness in the body. But I do this quick because I'm super sensitive to onions and I'm just giving it like a really quick chop. Whew. 
Okay, I have all of my ingredients mise en place and ready to go, and now let's get over to the stove and start cooking. I'm gonna turn my stove on medium heat, and I'm using my favorite Le Creuset Dutch oven because it heats evenly, it cooks everything beautifully. I've had this for about 14 years, and it is really beautiful, and I love making soup in this, so let's get started. And using my squeeze bottle, I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of olive oil. And I'm gonna start with the onions first. One thing I like to do to make sure that it is hot is I just take a little piece of onion and just hold it in the oil and just see if it sizzles. If it doesn't, then it is definitely not ready. But if it does, then you can add it in there. It's not ready yet. There, you hear that? Now it's ready. I add in some salt, stir it around so that the onions can get coated in that olive oil and the salt, the fat and the salt and the heat will bring out the flavors beautifully and start to soften and sweeten the onions. As we get more into the fall and winter seasons in this year, I've been a lot more passionate about cooking and teaching about lung nourishment and digestive nourishment because of COVID-19. And I think it's really important that people to start to focus on those specific things. And whenever you have good digestion, you are in optimum health. And there are so many foods and things out there to nourish your lungs. So if you are interested in knowing about foods that nourish your lungs and your digestive system and you like this video, definitely hit subscribe and click the bell so you get notified every time I make a new video, which is every single week. So the onions are starting to soften and it smells amazing. There's nothing I love more than starting a soup or a stew or any dish, in fact, where I start with onions, and garlic, and it just makes the whole house and kitchen smell absolutely delicious. Next, I'm gonna add in all of my vegetables. So I have butternut squash, carrots, parsnips, and apples. I'm a huge fan of seasoning as you go, so I just take a nice three-quarter pinch of salt, probably two because this is a lot of vegetable and fruit, and I'm going to just stir that around to combine and coat it in that oil. The colors in this are gorgeous. I like to cook by color for my health, so anytime you see orange and yellow vegetables and fruits, that's real, they're really good for your digestive system and your stomach and your spleen. If you're interested in learning more about food by color and how to incorporate that into your life and your diet, check out my videos, Eat by Color, because it's super informative and it's really fun to learn about food and think about food that way. I'm gonna cover this for a couple minutes because I want the moisture from the vegetables and the fruit to release and blend together. And a nice way to do that is to cover it so everything is contained. This Dutch oven is very hot, so I'm going to lower it to a simmer. The nice thing about Dutch ovens like this is once they're hot, they are hot, so you don't have to have such an intense flame. You let the pot do all of the cooking for you. So I lowered it to a simmer. I'm going to just let it brew for a few minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on my other aromatics, which is a lemon and a ginger. Ginger is one of my favorite spices, and it is really delicious to add into stir fries or sautés or soups. I personally love making ginger tea almost every single night, and it is one of these magical spices that are amazing for nausea, for bad digestion, for gas, for bloating. It helps boost your immune system and is incredibly just good for pretty much any ailment that you have. I like to use a spoon to peel the ginger, especially around these little hard to reach areas versus using a knife so that way you maximize as much ginger as possible. And 
I could have chosen to leave the ginger skin on, but oftentimes I find it to be a little bit bitter. So this is how much I'm going to use. I know that with all of that sweet, I'm gonna have to add in a sour and a little bit of bitter. So for me, adding in an acid like lemon juice is key. I may need two lemons, but I wanna test out with just one because lemon juice is so sour and so strong. So it may just be all that I need. That sizzle sounds so beautiful. So the vegetables look really good. They have sweat a little bit, but they're still quite hard in texture. So I'm gonna add the marrow stock and stir it around so they're submerged in it and then let that boil for about 30 minutes. I turned the heat back up to a medium because once I add in this room temperature marrow stock, it's gonna stop sizzling. I'm gonna add a pinch more salt. I'm gonna add one bay leaf just to the top, cover it and let it simmer for about 30 minutes. So I'm just going to break down the rest of the butternut squash so I can use it at a later time. So what I like to do is just break it down, chop them up, put them in a freezer bag, label them. But what I wanted to show you is what I do with these leftover scraps. <laughs> so what I like to do is come outside, and this is deer food. Guaranteed they will totally eat this. Anything I can do to help out the deer, because they're just so cute. Look how cute. I'm checking on the soup. It's been about 15 minutes, so this is about the halfway point. My heat is at a simmer, and it is starting to look really, really good, and I can tell that the vegetables are getting more hydrated and plump, and it is smelling amazing. I'm gonna throw in my ginger. This is about two tablespoons worth, and again, I'm keeping them in larger chunks because when I use the immersion blender to blend all of it, I want to make sure that I don't have any small bits in there that the immersion blender won't process. So I'm just gonna stick that in there and let this go for another 15 to 20 minutes. Whew, it's been well over 20 minutes. I just let it kind of simmer and cook down and it's pretty soft in texture. So this is where I want it to be. So that took about 25 minutes and it smells incredible. It's time to break out the immersion blender. So for this, I'm just gonna turn off the heat and get it ready. I'm just gonna do it right on the stove because the cord is long enough, but it's making sure that I don't splatter everything everywhere. First, I kinda like to start mashing it a little bit just like this, just to see if the texture is good, and then I will turn it on. I press down, and then swirl, swirl it around a little bit. You can use a blender if you want, like a Vitamix, and ladle everything in there and do it in batches so it gets that really nice puree texture. Or you can use an immersion blender. It really just depends on the textures you like. Um, I find that this is easier in a way because you can control the texture whether you want a little bit of like clumpiness and chunkiness in there or if you like it smooth, this, this does both. All right, so the texture is Still a little bit chunky, but it is definitely creamier. If you were to use a Vitamix, it would come out more smooth, but I like this texture. I think that it's good. And the thing I like about this method is that you don't use any cream. So this recipe is dairy-free, it's gluten-free. It could be vegetarian if you were to use a veggie stock instead of the marrow stock that I used. But regardless, it is really delicious and really creamy and silky. All right, I think we are clump free. Let's do a taste test to see what it needs. 
oh my God, practically nothing. That is so delicious and so smooth. The salt is right on point. To me, it has just enough. Mmm. It could use a little bit more, but it's almost there. And that is the beauty of seasoning as you go. It's so much more effective in creating this savory, delicious flavor. But I'm gonna put two more three finger pinches and I'm gonna add a little bit of the lemon juice. I used about half of what I squeezed. And for warmth, I'm gonna add in some cinnamon and some nutmeg. Oh, that is so good. That is absolutely delicious. I'm just gonna chop up some chives to put on top. So there it is. My butternut squash apple ginger soup with parsnip and carrot and warming spices. What I like to do is cool this down and put it in some quart containers and freeze it for a later time because during the winter season this is perfect to have and it is one of my favorite soups to make that just uses simple whole ingredients that are really good for you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, click like and subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell so that you get notified every single time I make a new video, which is every single week. Write me a comment below if you want to know about certain substitutes or alternatives that you can use in this recipe. And also write me a comment just to say hi and let me know who you are because I love interacting with all of you. Thanks for watching. Take care. Be well.